amazing. Right then. So, no cringe intro from you today, Adam. Are they cringe? Yeah, some of them. I think they're engaging. They can but be no, I, I look at our retention graph in YouTube and yeah, I, I could work on my intros, is all I will say on that front. <laughs> yeah, true, true, yeah. Um, right then, sad I didn't have much of an official intro. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk about something that, despite our laughter, is actually very important and very um, disconcerting. I think a lot of people will have, well, the, if they're watching this video, a lot of people will have watched our Saudi Arabia video because... It was our biggest one, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's by probably good. twice the amount of views of other ones, yeah. Standard. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I guess this is second edition of eSports sports washing, or eSports washing, I guess you should say. Which is ironic, because, um, like, eSports players don't... Well, if you go to a LAN, you'll realise there's not a lot of washing that goes on in eSports, <laughs> actually. <laughs> you know, like, if, you, if you've been to a LAN, like, I saw the other day, like, Fnatic. Where, yeah, it's hot. Uh, for, <laughs> Fnatic's, yeah, it's hot. for Fnatic's 18-year anniversary, they're giving away, like, some um, Nivea gift sets where you get, like, moisturizer, moisturizer and deodorant and stuff. I was like, this job's giving them away at events, mate, not just yeah, for the 18th yeah. birthday. Like, we could all all benefit that's... from that. My my nose would appreciate it very much. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a <laughs> hidden business opportunity. Get links and Nivea and Unilever to... Set up stalls at Epic Land and oh, <laughs> insomnia. I, I'd, I'd pay for it, other people, <laughs> you know, <what> I mean? <laughs> <laughs> they don't have to buy it themselves, yeah. mate. I don't know if they've got the self awareness for that, but it's a madness. Uh, a LAN it's event madness. And it gets hot in those rooms, mm. but anyway, uh, I don't even know how I anyway. got into that. I apologize, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, esports washing, so yeah, yeah second, edition. second edition of esports washing. I think, I think, I mean, we could probably find more editions of it, I reckon, if we if we dug far enough, but. Anyway, this is, I guess, second edition at least of Middle Eastern questionable, Middle Eastern country with questionable ethics record that is involved in some shady shit. I mean, obviously, the last episode was on Saudi. Um, UAE have, at least with the Yemeni civil war, are like very closely aligned with, with Saudi. Like, they back Saudi Arabia. I, I get, like, I don't really want to get into the foreign policy of it all, like, at all, because it's confusing and that's not where our expertise lie um but i mean i guess just to give a super quick background on um on uae so in yemen uae backed forces um partook in torture slash making people disappear um like magic. i said they back yeah just like magia yeah. um and like I said, they back the Saudis, who I think the Saudis have been like roundly condemned for Yemen, at least in a lot of quarters. Again, though, don't want to get too deep into the foreign policy because you'll find like when you look into it, the Saudi Arabian regime and the whole complicated civil war in Yemen is like, you'll find that the Saudi side are often fighting against like Islamists and like extremists, like actual, you know, real terrorist type. So it's like, they're fighting them, so I guess some people in some roundabout way could say, "Well, hang on, aren't they doing a good thing?" It's like, no, there have been some also bombing kids and that. But exactly, like... <laughs> yeah. There have been. That's what I was going to say. So Jesus. there have been like crazy atrocities all throughout that war, which the UAE I have to take like a lot of responsibility for. Um, but anyway, with that little bit of background, and I'm sure we'll get into more. Um, so the news as of as of when Adam it was like a month ago wasn't it? Yeah, June thirtieth it was announced and uh, there wasn't really there was an, enough press coverage ESI and, and the typical folks in Ven Global and stuff covered it but mm. uh, there wasn't really much uh, uproar about it which is probably as we'll get to like my main point or something to look at. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so it was yeah, about, okay, about yeah. a month ago now. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I read Richard Lewis's piece, which we can link in the description box because it's. Really... I will remember to do that this time. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it's really good, and he basically just explains all the kind of hypocrisy. Pulls some key quotes from from the Blast guys. So Blast have partnered with AD Gaming, Abu Dhabi Gaming, AD Abu Gaming, Dhabi yeah. Gaming, yeah. Um, on it's Blast Premier, isn't it? I know it's obviously Counter Strike. It is, yeah, it's Blast Premier. Blast Premier. So it's, it's for like the global finals, I believe. Right, That right. wrap up this year's circuit. Yeah. 
So they partner with them for how long? Three years? It's a three-year deal, but they haven't announced what goes on beyond like this one tournament. Yeah, yeah. Or what it um, actually entails, whether there's any financial things involved, or if it's like, yeah, well, you can use this center for free to host mm-hmm. uh, to host this event, or we are paying you to host an event here. Like none yeah, of that's yeah. been been detailed. So realistically, they called it a landmark three-year partnership, and like that's that's all we have to go on. Besides Land- the fact they're going to host uh, this um, this event, well, landmine three-year partnership. <laughs> yeah, landmine one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Fucking hell. So yeah, but it's yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. It's hard. To, it's hard to judge it when you don't know exactly what's what. And I think it's been left <clears throat> quite vague on purpose. Because if they they detail their master plan entirely, then then it's easier to, to figure out what's what, right? Mm. Um, but yeah, yeah, we know the next event's going to be in um, Abu Dhabi. Yeah, where like I think uh, Phase Clan's one of the only locks um, right. for that in the moment, and they've just been competing in Saudi anyway. So I mean. Yes, and well, FaZe obviously don't care. And they've obviously just gone public as well. Yes, so like they, they'll take money wherever they can. Yes, exactly what I was just going to say, mate. Now that they're up public, here, they up here there shit. will be a little card clicky thing. I don't know what they're called, but I know how to do them now. So oh, the little you can go, up with the yes, information. You can watch our FaZe video uh, from earlier this week's last <coughs> week. <coughs> Which was a good YouTubers. one, if I may add. I think, I think yeah. it's gone down pretty well, mate, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I like it. I think it's pretty good. Um... So yeah, so AD Gaming have partnered with Blast, and it's another um, another version of the same old sports washing, which you're seeing. Like I said, you're seeing it in I said this in our Saudi video. You're seeing it in esports, of course, but you're also seeing it a lot more in um, like traditional sports. I think I mentioned golf last time. Well, that's like ramped up mm-hmm. even more, which I believe is yeah. So that. LIV or leave, however you say that. That's a new, brand new golf tournament. That's, I believe. I don't really know golf, but I believe it's <clears throat> it's taking place at the same time as another like major golf tournament, um, which takes up a big chunk of the calendar. So it's like you either do one or the other. And loads of people have been, loads of top golfers have been paid like literally some of them hundreds of millions to take part in the LIV Saudi backed one. Again, mate, these. Um, regimes are ramping up and and to be clear even on ad gaming's website it I literally verbatim says ad gaming is a government-led initiative mm-hmm. um so amasi's broad efforts throughout abu dhabi to transform the emirate into a global gaming hub so it's literally abu dhabi itself that is bankrolling all of this Mm-hmm. Um, we don't know how much they're investing, but I know um, there's already a history with like AD Gaming and esports when they got. Um, so when the deal between Team Nigma, worst name ever still, and um, Galaxy Racer, they obviously there was the acquisition slash merger there, and now it's Nigma Galaxy. They're based in Abu Dhabi. Mm. I think they're being paid by AD Gaming to to house themselves there. Interesting. And partner with like Emirates Airlines as well, I think. But yeah, so they've already they already had like <clears throat> some involvement. Outside of the local esports scene, I suppose that we necessarily wouldn't see. Mm. I don't think we'd see that, but on like an international scale, obviously big Dota team. Um, yeah, they've already got the involvement there, and this is just like the the next big push. And and yeah. one one thing I feel I feel the need to say is, of course, like this all became a really huge worry in the esports industry in 2018 when obviously Blast and LEC partnered with Neon, which is Saudi. Um, on mm. ground that is not theirs, they're building that futuristic city. And mm. everyone at the time, including broadcast staff at the LEC and such, said like we're not gonna we're not gonna stand for this. Um obviously last time we spoke about this I got called <clears throat> a sexist and misogynist and I was targeting people. That is that was not the aim by any means, but like certain people spoke out against it like large individual uh, uh sorry influential people I can't speak today. It's been a long one and it's only midday. Absolutely. But um Speaking out against it, and and that was enough to kind of reverse these sponsorships. Now, now it's at the point where this ownership coming in with the Saudi stuff, you think like, okay, well, we can't res- we can't reverse ownership. That makes sense in a sense. Like you can't you you can fight it as much as you want. It's not going to fucking change anything. MTG yeah. sold them off, but with this again, it's just a partnership. But the thing is, so so there was the backlash where Blast and Riot Games had to cancel this Neon um, sponsorship. Okay, so we can't take Middle Eastern money. That, that's that's the president that was set at that point. Um, and then ESL and DreamHack and Face It are bought by Saudi. 
Yeah. No one really fights against it. There's some tweets by the usual people you'd expect. Me, Richard Lewis, Thorin, some of the more outspoken people who are are willing to, to speak out about it as much. But like players, most organizations don't give a fuck. Like Team Liquid like had their whole pride thing like uh, where they said they wouldn't compete in Texas or something because of some um, laws or maybe the abortion rights mm. stuff. I can't remember. Right. I think there was some pride related thing where they were like, oh, we care about people. And it's like, nah, but you're a partner team with ESL getting money directly from ESL. Yeah. It was, which is now Saudi. So like no matter what you say, your actions mean something completely different. And the, the, the ownership aspect of that means ESL now, the main competitor of Blast, because if you think about it, the CSGO calendar is effectively the majors, which is typically ESL and one of the, pers- one of the company anyway, and Blast. <clears throat> That's it. So now Blast, apparently, based on the Neom stuff, they're like, oh, well, we can't take the money of, the mid- <laughs> of like people from, um, states from the Middle East. Obviously, it's blood money. People are against it. ESL comes in, gets bought out. They get billions behind them now who knows how much indescribable amounts of funding behind them where they yeah. don't matter if they lose money year on year now they can just flood the fucking scene they yeah. get that with minimal backlash so then it seems like one like blast can do this kind of deal and it's not really going to matter like teams are still going to compete people are still going to tune in and watch because at the end of the day they care about the gameplay not the people behind it in terms of the organizers and stuff but then also like blast are losing money like basically every other esports company what else are they gonna fucking do if if ad gaming hypothetically comes and says like we'll pay you to come compete in in abu dhabi for th- what, over a three-year basis and we know like it could be a lot of money mm. if, like it, it, you've basically got no, no other option and you think like oh you know what um people aren't gonna really care anyway there might be a few out- outraged tweets and i'll get ragged on by thorin on a consistent basis and that's literally about it so fuck it, let's go for it. So I kind of think in a sense the ESL deal uh, kind of forced Blast's hand into this. I don't, I don't. There's not much venture capital floating about in esports right now. So yeah. what was the alternative if they're running out of dosh? You know, maybe they have to sell yeah. their souls a little bit or else they don't exist. That's like the main point I wanted to bring up really. I was thinking about mm-hmm. that a lot since this has been announced. Yeah, yeah. No, really good point. Really good point. Um, and I also think... You know, on a certain level, it's also pretty like simple in terms of if this is our industry, if esports is our industry, and like with the siege event, the major that was meant to be held in, where was that? It I was think um, UAE as well. Yeah, UAE. Um, so that was going to be held there, but then there were a load of um, LGBT um, casters and talent around the event so they i think spoke out a petition was released loads of people signed it i think like thirteen thousand or more signed it and then they no longer they, they decided not to have the event there which i think is now in berlin um that's a rare w like yeah where was that where was that energy esl which hosts tournaments across basically every game yeah you know, like it really takes like it's almost as if like the the big because per- casters are more than just casters they're like influencers for the games themselves like yeah, yeah. they're they're figureheads right at the top it's almost as if like they have to lead the charge unanimously and then it's like okay we care what they think let's let's do it but like mm. although like it, that hasn't happened with ESL the organizations didn't really come out and speak against it whereas they did with the Neom stuff obviously back in the day like mm. even Carlos and stuff speaking publicly about it but like. That hasn't happened at all with the ESL DreamHack and Face It, and and now with the Blast thing as well. I guarantee we'll see more, yeah. basically all of the same talent at at the, this Blast event. You know. Well, yeah, yeah. So um, I think it, it must be like it has to be like a coordinated effort across across the board from like the biggest people in that game. Yeah, and, because uh, it's just not happening like that, is it elsewhere? Yeah, because ultimately, when you boil it down, it's like if you're a gay person or if you're a trans person or whatever. Um. Are you welcome in those countries? I think it's honestly, you can break it down as much as you want. You can do as much analysis as you want. I think they're in certain countries, in UAE and Saudi Arabia to use too, but especially UAE, that's the purpose of this video. Um, their values and practices just aren't aligned with ours on things like that. So we just shouldn't have any tournament over there until that changes now like you said that's not going to happen unfortunately in the real world because especially we're about to enter a really rough period for like the global economy not just certain countries 
these esports um, tournament operators that were already struggling to earn money are, are always going to fucking take it. Um, just like we see in traditional sports, like the, the, the prize is too great. So you just, you're always going to say yes. Um, but until kind of the values and practices of those countries more closely resembles ours in terms of like gay rights and just general stuff. Like it's not even just gay rights. There's all sorts of stuff. A guy, um, I suppose this is still related to the gay rights issue, but guy that Scottish guy that accidentally, he was like stumbling and put his hand on somebody's waist by accident and got locked up for three years. It's like, what? That's, it's just fucked. Mm-hmm. And like, that's where we're choosing to host tournaments and have, presumably have fans fly over at least have casters and stuff fly over um so how do you square that it's just you know until that changes there really shouldn't be tournaments over there there shouldn't it doesn't make sense does not it and in a sense it all do you think it almost um forces people into staying quote-unquote closeted if like they they feel like okay if i need to compete and we're going to be in saudi and abu dhabi a lot and stuff i can't come out as a public gay person or a trans person or whatever it may be you know anything yeah, yeah. that that's um, discriminated against by these countries and look like, i don't think our uh our country is perfect and america is certainly not perfect either so i don't i I, I, at, I don't i don't want to just say like they should just be perfectly like us but i also think mm. like if they were welcoming of people no matter who those people choose to be yeah yeah at that point yeah. is like okay that's like oh, I- our country and killing journalists and all that shit as well. Like, yeah. there's more more to go on than just like discrimination, isn't there? Our country in the US and other parts of Europe obviously aren't perfect and have their own um, like racism problems and issues with, like you said, abortion and gay rights and stuff. Like, obviously, but you compare it's night and day when you compare mm-hmm. here, as in here, as in the Western Hemisphere, Western countries versus countries like the UAE. I mean, it's night and day. I don't care what anyone says. Like, obviously, our country is not perfect, but Jesus Christ, it is one million times better than that. Yeah. You know, in those ways. Um, I, I so. think part partnering with like literally the state or the government itself, getting into business with them. I, I don't care whether you say this is the case or not when you announce it in your press release, but like you are effectively saying I'm okay with what they stand for. I I don't mind how they run. And how they conduct themselves, yeah. and they're people I won't mind getting into like figurative bed with. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, there's no way around it. Whether you say like this is strictly because it, um, we're trying to be a global organization, and you know we've hosted events over here for so long and never over there, so we want to spread the love. And you know, there's so many gamers over there, so mm. it only makes sense to to bring it to them as well. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, sure, you can have yeah, that yeah. reasoning, but realistically, what you're saying is like you are fine with, with the way they go about things. And and fundamentally, I'm not. <laughs> so, yeah, and, like, and, like I'm said, this. and like you said, attitudes and beliefs are one thing, but you're, it doesn't matter if your actions are, you're going to go and have tournaments in these places and make, you know, make your talent and fans feel unsafe and not want to go. Um, and just, I mean, it really is as, as simple as they're just following the money. Um, can I read you the funny quote from... Um, the managing director of Blast. I would what love nothing more. Is Blast Premier the managing director? By the way, I just want to say not Blast overall. Okay. Oh, okay. Fair not enough. that it's an important distinction, but like I'm borderline <laughs> obsessive. It's all right. Don't worry. <laughs> right. Okay. Here we go. So Charlotte Kenny, managing director of Blast Premier. Who I'm sure it's fine, but this is a funny quote. As part of our host cities process, we are always on the lookout for leading locations and arenas all around the world. Abu Dhabi, after a comma, which should be a full stop. Abu Dhabi is the perfect location to follow on from this month's highly successful spring final in Lisbon and November's fall final in Copenhagen. So apparently, <laughs> <laughs> apparently the perfect jumping off point from Lisbon and Copenhagen, two of the most like fucking central European, as in like culturally, like two of the most European um, cities there are, Apparently, the perfect next step from there is Abu Dhabi, uh, yeah, which is probably like 5,000 miles away. And if your yeah, values exactly. are making money, then... Exactly. Well, this is the thing. It's like, well, okay, so it's not perfect in that sense, but maybe it's perfect in an ethical sense. Is that what she means? It's just I the don't know. spiel, isn't it? Yeah, it's, 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 it's nothingness. It's, yeah. it's nothingness at, at best and foolish at, uh, 
at worst, I suppose. Yeah, so thought that's that was a, funny. It's, it's a, a good, good laugh. quote. It's a good quote. And then um, there was like a, a, a secondary quote as well, and I wish I could remember it, and it's going to take too long to find it. But let me try and find it quickly, actually, because I think it's of worth, uh, if not for comedic value alone. Um, you on about the cost-effective solution quote? It, it could well be that. That sounds about right. Like, yeah, what what does that exa- exactly mean? Uh, current, yeah, I know. Do you want me to read it? Yeah, yeah, if you've got it. Currently, Please. we are on the lookout for whichever country either represents a cost-effective solution to running an event or, even better, foot the bill entirely. Wait, hold on. Let me just make sure I'm reading the right thing. Oh, fucking hell. I'm such a fucking idiot. <laughs> I don't no, think so I'd say is, that. No, no, no. So this is... <laughs> So that was Richard Lewis's translation. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he did like a, his version of it, or like an honest version <laughs> yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, an honest version of it, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Clip I was going to say, they're very upfront about that. I don't... <laughs> Shit. Um, we we don't mind that, killing people. <laughs> <I'm> like, fuck <laughs> the gays. Like, none of it matters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now let's Shout. have some good CS. <laughs> Shout out Richard Lewis. He's always coming with the fire. Yeah, yeah. He, um, he definitely put uh, put it on a lot of people's... Uh, radars but again like mm. after probably two, after like two days of that article circulating it'll die off and just be like another piece that he should print out and put on his wall because mm. it's an absolute banger like that like people yeah. aren't going to follow through with any of it or like really do anything with that information no apart from fucking dickhead and dickhead talking about it on cyber athletics which there you go. but well the, no no doubt they'll fucking they'll sell out that, mm-hmm. that that's double double entendre there, yeah. but no 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 doubt they'll, they'll sell out the arena uh, as I've sold out their values and ethics <laughs> once again, and um, it'll be seen as a grand success. But like and as part of a three year partnership, you'd have to assume that mm-hmm. they're going to continue working together over the next two years after that. Um, mm-hmm. And the fact yeah. is, one yeah. event does that. If one event's the whole activation in one of those years of your three-year partnership. That doesn't seem like a very effective partnership to me. So maybe there'll there's be, going to be more extensive things throughout that. There'll be promotion like, in there, surely. They'll be I, like, I, you're I think an ambassador for UAE gaming type thing. Fuck you know yeah. I mean? Yeah, or, or if it's like they host qualifiers over there to try and find like um, talent that's not yeah, quite made sure across in the West and all those kind of things, you know, for like the next circuit. Or mm. if they give them a couple of spots in the circuit overall. Like there has to be more to it, I think, after after this first year. Because like one event alone to me, I don't know, it doesn't sound enough. Though obviously it will seemingly have a sizable impact. And just like Blast's legitimacy and reputation as being like one of the best tournament organizers in the industry alone is a, mm. val- a very valuable get for Abu Dhabi Gaming and, and the government that, that yeah. runs it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. If you're going to go for anybody in esports, then that's, that's a good thing, so, I reckon. So my, um, my overall thought on this now is I've, I've reached beyond being annoyed, caring. It's just... Mm. With ESL, face it group, the acquisition from Saudi Gaming Group, um, public investment fund, Saudi Arabia government, mm. follow the trail. And then with this now, Blast AD, no one really giving a shit. Like, we're just accepting it now. Like, I, I see the, the Rainbow Six boycott as a one off or a rarity or like an exception to the rule. Mm. Now, now, at this point, I just think, like, no one actually gives a fuck. Like, like no one in the decision making process at least or someone who can make changes you know what I mean? no one like barely any people have left esl since this whole thing went down there's mm-hmm. one person who watched our episode on the saudi thing and actually left esl because they realized they felt awful about it and it wasn't according to their standards so oh, wow. that's a good endorsement of what <laughs> what we did there to speak out against it but like that's one person you know like and mm-hmm. however many hundreds of people are working there now and however many more are going to work there because like they can seemingly poach anyone from any company if they just offer them double what the fuck they were getting like that money doesn't matter <laughs> to them yeah. does it realistically and most most companies are pinching pockets yeah. Saudis don't yeah. have to do that so I say all this to say like I don't I, I think like esports is just gone now like they what people wanted it to be a, a, like a traditional sport and you've got that not in the best of ways but now yeah it can be akin to to football and F1 and all those wonderful sports that are that are fine taking this money and hosting events in Qatar and and basically co-signing the actions of <laughs> these places that I think are deplorable in many ways um, in, in terms of how they, they treat people, you know? Yeah. So I, I think eSports is, is gone. And, like, frankly, um, whenever my time at Hitmarker is up, could be 10 years from now, could be 
I don't know, a year, and a year from now, whenever, I don't have a clue. Can't see into the future, but like I'm gone from esports then. Like, this is mm-hmm. firmly my last esports job. Like I, I, It doesn't really make sense to me now for me to stay. Like I'm, I'm at the conclusion where it's like it's fucked. It's a big moment. Adam Fitch is announcing his retirement from esports. A big oh, don't because I big big deal. <laughs> Richard said he was he was like winding down and stuff, and obviously Dom wrote that article, and everyone was like, "Oh, he's gone now." You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. obviously I'm not going to get any press from me saying that, but like no, I'm not done yet. But like I'm just saying like whenever hit market, it inevitably fuck me off for being a loudmouth, annoying prick. It could be like five years until they realise that and have enough. But like, but they should have known that before they hired you. To be fair, they did. They've known me like four <laughs> years, so it's mad that I got hired despite that. Um, yeah, whenever, whenever I'm done at Hitmark, which hopefully in a long, a long time, not anytime soon, then uh, you know, like I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be looking for jobs in this industry still. Uh, no, no I chance. hear that, mate. I I'll do. go work in F1 for Mercedes. Yeah. I feel you, mate. <laughs> that, yeah. that is also a joke since they are also Saudi owned, like well, partially Saudi owned. Okay. I'll go work for yeah, Nintendo. The F1, the F1 oh wait, no, they're they're five percent owned by uh, <laughs> the exact same fund. Oh fuck! Like, yeah. there's not many places to go anymore in, in entertainment. I'll just go work. I'll be a sandwich yeah. artist at Subway, and I'll, I'll enjoy every second. It's sad. I think that's the. Uh, there's just going to be blood money. Me questionable money wherever you look, isn't there? Just is because money attracts. Yeah, and I, did Richard make the point that? All of the organisations and tournament organisers boycotted Russia, but not Saudi. I can't. I don't know if he made that point in the article or just generally. In the article, I think he did. I if not, it, then I'm a fucking I... genius. I've heard it somewhere, but like, it's a very good point. Mm. It's like so we're f- we're fine saying like Russia like has no place, you know, like only in organisations like Virtus Pro and Gambit. Um, players can compete because it's this whole invasion. It's not down to them. But they have to do it under a neutral brand, and they can't rep like Russia in any way. Mm. That's that's fine. But like, oh, the Saudis killing, <laughs> killing gays, bombing children, and taking away <laughs> rainbow colored toys to crack down on homosexuality. Yeah, they're they're completely fine, mate. But mm. but now if you go after Ukraine, that's that's the one place we can't we can't forgive. Like, there's obviously a huge double standard there. Yeah. Um, yeah there so is. you know, like we just well, pick, we pick and choose the battles, and and it feels listen. like um, we pick the ones that are. Uh, not going to affect our bottom line too much. <laughs> effectively. Yeah. I think you're getting nihilistic about it all and just like, what's the point? This is just how it is right now. It's but true, you know, no, it is true. I agree with you. But people, you know, you're known as the guy that holds people like that accountable. So it's like, it's, it's a very valuable um, position to hold. It's but like it's, it's a worry people. when I don't care about doing that anymore because yeah, I is. could be much more vocal online and like I used to be. But now I'm just like, no matter what I say, no matter what yeah, any yeah. of us do, besides those key people at the top of these companies, like it don't matter what any of us think and say, basically, unless mm. we're all going to mobilise and we're proven at this point, like the esports fans don't really give a fucking shit. Mm. Like, yeah, I think, but- like obviously, with like um, the Gamers Eight event, I know we need to wrap up shortly, but like the Gamers Eight event, um, Saudi event going on right now, FaZe Clan just won the Rocket League tournament, I believe, they're giving away fifteen million dollars over eight weeks, if I remember correctly. Um, Moist Esports, their Rocket League team, said they were not going to attend because they don't fuck with like the <laughs> the, the Saudi way of living, effectively. Mm. Um, if I remember correctly, and that was that was it. Everyone else just went, like Phase went, and uh, other teams. So, like, besides the the select few, because I'm looking here. Um, yeah, there's Fortnite, Rainbow Six, um, PUBG. Mobile Rocket League and the Riyadh, Riyadh, Riyadh. I don't know how to pronounce mm. it, but the Capital City Masters, which I don't know, but that's already been and gone. But like, so yeah, there's other, there's other weeks coming along and, and more more teams to compete, and it'll be interesting to see the organisations that that go because I don't think any are actually boycotted it publicly. Besides, as I say, like the players of Moist Esports for fuck's sake, Moist Esports of all teams, <laughs> Moist, best name or worst name in esports. Yeah, man. So. Probably I'm quite nihilistic, but like I truly believe like uh, we're, we're past but the point now done? where anything can fucking happen. Like before yeah. anything can change, it's not going to get better from here. No, no, I I agree. I'm, I I come at it or I land at the uh, real politic type standpoint of that's just what it's going to be. Like it's hard. Like yeah, it's I'd be an idealistic and hoping it's but like what is it, what is actually going to happen? And I agree. I always land at the position of like. No one's gonna stop this money. Like, if if Blast said no, they would have just gone to fucking well, the um, Saudi Arabia beat 
beat them to ESL, but they would have gone somewhere else. Like they would have found somewhere else to put the money. Somebody I'm surprised. Or they would have increased the offer, and Blast would have said, "Oh, fuck it, I'll go on." Then. If you that's give them an offer, they can't that. refuse, mate. Like yeah. that's that, and, and that that doesn't have to be that much like eye watering money for companies in esports. You know, I'm surprised Blast isn't isn't under ownership of Savvy Gaming Group as well. Mm-hmm. To be honest, then they'd have the full monopoly on CS:GO besides like the academy stuff, which we play runs. And like mm-hmm. the occasional major, which may go to like PGL, but they've had bloody two in a row now, so they're out of it for a while. Mm. There's rumors of Perfect World, like a Chinese um, organizer um, oh, coming yeah. for for the one after Rio, I believe. But like, interesting. Outside of that, they could like they could fully corner the CS:GO market, and and obviously Blast have been in FIFA, Apex Legends, Fortnite, and Valorant, I think, as well now. And ESL is basically across like every title in in mm. some way. Um, Dreamhack. I'm yeah. not going to comment on them. It's a piece of shit, brand face it, whatever. But like, yeah, I, I just feel like now it's like we're, we're, nothing's going to change, mate. I'm just, I, I just no. ex- expect more just try of it. To, we just try to like keep people aware, spread as pre- spread awareness as much as we possibly can. Because like, you're never going to stop dodgy money from being anywhere. Dodgy money's always existed. So like, what can you do as just a standard like employee or a standard? journalist or i mean we're both fake journalists these days but um, mm-hmm. oh i don't even i don't really claim to be one anymore no, I, i'm not one. i'm a fucking i'm a talent manager <laughs> that's, that's literally my full-time role now so i'm definitely not a not a uh, journalist um so yeah i, I guess just milking like, it for views mate that's what we're doing yeah exactly. so so we can get this non-monetizable content to the moon <laughs> yeah for our own gain <laughs> yeah, yeah like, uh, like next week we come on next episode it's like Hi guys, Cyber Athletic sponsored by <laughs> by Gamers Eight, Savvy Gaming Group, <laughs> ESL Face It Group, AD Gaming, like <laughs> MSB. Is it MSB or MBS? I never get it right. We're building our. Uh, I have no idea. I don't even know what that is. MBS. We're building our. Brand. Bin Salman Al Saad, the, oh, right, yeah. the de facto Sorry. leader. MBS. Yeah. There we go. Sorry, it just sounds like some sort of like yeah bowel syndrome, doesn't it? <laughs> that's what I thought you and <laughs> yes what I've got or is it MSB <laughs> yeah sorry about that I just I always forget it for some reason his, his name ain't very memorable for me but uh, so I guess we say all this to say like look we're not going to make any difference in this but we can keep people no, you aware can, of you, you'll make what. a little difference like you said with the ESL employee that left after watching that video like you, you can make a difference and you can increase awareness so that maybe when something else comes up where there's like a, a vote on something, maybe people vote the right way because they're aware, like despite this dodgy money, there are still little things that we can do within the within its framework to kind of ease the pain or um, just make things a little bit more ethical wherever possible. Like I, as long as you're aware, so that when something comes up, you know, I don't know. Like you said, can you change the actual fund in itself? Nah, unfortunately not. Like, well, I mean... Never say never, but you like there's always like I said there's always going to be a company that says yes to it, so it's mm-hmm. it's hard to know. So like, what can you do in the meantime? Well, they they get such be an advantage, good. such a boon from that. If you yeah. get billions behind you, it's hard to compete. So you need you need billions of your own somehow, and, and there's only so many places you can get that, right? Mm. Yeah. But hey, so is oh, that yeah. everything we've got on this? Yeah, I think so. So yeah, oh, in conclusion, episode. Blast is um has been defiled with dodgy money, also. It's their second time doing it, so we knew they weren't against it anyway. And yeah. coming out, come out of a, a pandemic where you could barely host events, and mm. and where your competitors just been supercharged with literally <laughs> untold money. Like, yeah, yeah I guess my sense. conclusion is my conclusion would be as long as let's say we get two hundred and fifty views on this, two hundred and fifty more people know about this and are educated on it than before. Not that we're the fucking like, <laughs> you know the intellectuals of esports, the, the, the educators. Um, but if more people, if you increase your awareness, I suppose that's a good thing. That's, that's what I'm going to say to myself. At least know that you're enjoying dirty money when you're spending it. You know what I mean? Like at least, yeah. you know, like this right here. Yeah. It's, it's not great, but like, filthy, look, I've got but... my new Jordans. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? I've got a new Dyson and like, I've got, <laughs> and it's cordless. So like realistically you fucking wins here, mate. Nice. Uh, them but uh have you got I'll, since you did the intro i'll let you do the outro as well oh my that's God. rare isn't it um have you got anything good any sage advice i've really not 
guess. <laughs> I've got no other advice. Are there Don't any big esports? Snow. Are there any uh, big esports events on soon? I can't be asked googling. Um, Champs is coming up, I think. Called Champs. Yeah, Champs is that this weekend? Maybe encourage people to watch Champs if you like COD. <laughs> yeah, that's the best I've got. <laughs> um, schedule. Let's I've see. I've actually not watched any. I need to know when to avoid the YouTube channel of Call of Duty. August fourth to seventh. So it goes okay. on next oh, week. Oh, so next weekend, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, I guess watch that. Yeah. But no, I've not got an outro. Fuck it. You're the you're the outro and intro king. I'm uh, I'm a nobody. I'm I'm li- literally riding off your coattails on this. Uh... But I'm a nobody as well, mate. Like no one gives a fuck about me anymore. So. <laughs> Yeah, you are. You are these days. You're nobody. Just yeah, just two like mid twenties folks just talking into the void. Mm. But that's fine. Anyway, um, anyway, on that note, bomb that subscription button. <laughs> <laughs> Torture <laughs> the subscription. Assassinate button. that like button, lads, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.